Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, inviting you to a little review of the Yulefall Note 14 Pro. Now the first thing you will see when you look at this machine online, both in the description as well as in the photography, is that it is in fact advertised in a misrepresenting fashion that it has 8 GB of RAM. In reality it only has 4 GB of RAM and 4 GB of virtual memory. So this phone's presentation starts with a flat out lie. Nonetheless, the phone itself is not so bad and I shall therefore have a look at it together with you. This is the box in which the UFO Note 14 Pro arrived. And this phone is an a way a pars pro toto for many other similar phones which cost a couple of tens of euro instead of the hundreds of euro that you normally pay for an android and whose functionality may in some ways be limited but if you need a secondary phone which still might fulfill that need decently enough and now my trusty scalpel shall help open this All right. And here we go. The box is nice. I have a bit of a box fetishist side. I love boxes. We're having here some warranty in which I can apparently activate some warranty online if I were so inclined and then we are having the phone itself I shall put it to the side here and see what else we're having we are having some kind of some sort of hard to get out sim tool which in this case and that's really just funny is nothing but a twisted wire you know how sometimes they make them in some sort of stylish fashion? <laughs> this is not much different than you taking a paper clip and twisting it. I love that. This is simplistic and nice. So, very simplistic SIM card opener. We are having a Note 14 quick guide, a safety prompt card and another warranty card I mean warranty card for what the dealer signature with rubber stamp I mean I bought this online so instructions of phone charging let's hope I don't die while doing that due to the limitation of aviation safety on battery power the battery should be kept within 30% when the phone is delivered Please charge the phone, uh, please charge the battery for 30 minutes before starting it up for use. I will not do that and I will hope that it will not blow up in my face. Then we're having the Note 14 quick guide, which is really quick. So we're having a headset jack, a very important property of a phone, which regrettably some nowadays do no longer have, but it is having a bit of a comeback, right? We're having a front camera, a receiver and a light sensor, a microphone, a USB port and a speaker, nothing to it. A rear camera, flash, card slot, volume and power key. Ah, and then this somewhat complex thing of putting in the card and uh, the SIM card and, and a TF card if one were so inclined. I will right now not do that. It's interesting that it mentions a limitation of 128 gigabyte you know when you do this you cannot all that easily necessarily swap sim cards because when you take it out you will necessarily take out also your tf card and sometimes that may lead to a mess up of programs bands we're having setting face unlock haven't tried that yet but might 
and yeah, a little bit about how to set up some hotspot. Not that I need it that much. And safety prompt card. And the RF specifications. Oh well, that, that actually might be interesting. So these are the specifications, should you ever be curious about this. I will not look too much into it, but here are also its SAR values and so on and so forth. So that is great. And continuing onwards, what I didn't order, but I'm all too happy to receive, is a phone cover. Now for a phone which costs a couple of tens of euro, such a cover can easily go into a high fraction of percentage if you have to buy it separately. So with the Yule Phone Note 14 Pro you don't. The nice thing about this model is it comes finally, as opposed to some other models of other manufacturers, with USB-C and not one of the predecessors. So we are having here a charging cable and a charger so I can also exchange data and ah, violence time and just charge the phone okay that's it the box is empty the floor of it doesn't come off now that we saw the periphery let's look at the machine itself it comes in such a box uh, not box, but uh, sleeve. And it has some sort of advertisement glued straight to its screen. And here finally, they are writing that it does have 4 GB of RAM as opposed to the lie online. It has some MediaTek Helio processor, never heard of it. And some 13 megapixel main camera, which to be frank, is not all that bad. Off it goes. And, ah yes, from what I can see here, it already has a screen cover attached. This is typical nowadays, and it does have it. So you don't need to take care of any screen protection. Not that you're likely to buy one for a phone of this category, but you could. And in the back here, we are having the eye maze for the two SIM cards that we're having here on the side. Let's try our trusty SIM tool and see, do things come off easily? I do not have a SIM handy, but... Yeah, not too hard to get out and put back in again. So let us start up our little friend here and see how it fares. The screen makes a bright impression. Looks nice enough. It is of course maybe not quite as bright as my iPhone XR's screen over here. But let's wait until it boots up completely, so I set its brightness to the top. Let's also see how long it takes for it to boot. This of course is a first use boot. And I will later maybe show you a boot in actual usage after I set it up. And so here we go, with the setup of language and so on and so forth. I will do that, so that we see how things are going. I'm going to stick with English United States. The problem is that if you don't do that and you ever need any help, it becomes a nightmare to Google settings names because they are getting translated and it is impossible to follow any tutorials. Connect to a mobile network, I'll skip for now. And I shall connect to a Wi-Fi network. Okay, <laughs> give me a second. So now we are having internet, no SIM card, and we are getting my phone ready.
Boy, is it getting my phone ready for a good while. <laughs> but I know it does not react yet on anything. It's getting my phone ready, right? You know, you may feel free to skip ahead, but I don't want to quit the video now. As I want to record how long it really does take to set this up. And this phone is still getting ready. And my smartphone circling, flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on that pallet bust of palace just above my chamber door. And it's ready nevermore. Just a few moments. <laughs> I mean, you've got to be kidding me, right? Just a moment. Just a moment. I just picked up a fault in the AE35 unit. It is going to go 100% failure within 72 hours. And now I can copy apps and data. I mean... I will not do that right now. Oftentimes that also doesn't work particularly well with these cheap phones. The reason being that they need updates. And before they get the update, they are hanging on the Google Play Store. So, as you try to transfer your information, it just doesn't actually transfer. And that's it. <laughs> you can do everything manually anyway. I shall now sign into my Google account. Putting on pause. Getting my account info. And things again take a good moment. Okay, using backup, using the location, allow scanning, turning off all of those invasive espionage things. Accept. Again, I have to wait. Choosing my search engine. I'm going to go with Oh, there are more. Still, I'm going to go with DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is actually good enough. And now I must add a pin. Cool. I have a pin. <laughs> so I can enable here this Hey Google thing. Definitely don't want to. Access your assistant without unlocking your device. Certainly not. Hey Wiretap, what's the weather like? Skipping adding any cards. Anything else? Control info on lock screen. Show sensitive con content only when unlocked. And done for now. So here we are.
Google Play Protect is turned on. One unused app, DuckDuckGo is downloading. And finish up your, finish setting up your Note 14. That's, you know, that's exactly what I thought I had done. But okay, let's finish setting it up. Start. It's gonna ask me a million things again. Connect to a mobile network, I said already, skip. <clears throat> Let's copy your data. Don't copy. Don't copy. Getting account info. How, how much can that take? How long can that be? Anything else? One sometimes may change the font size or change the wallpaper. Change the wallpaper, maybe. Oh no, you know what, let's not. Ha! Okay. My misfortune. This does not have the navigation buttons. Something I so much hate. <laughs> What is this wallpaper? Is this like Windows 10, but just as a little cutout? And for Android, I'm gonna go with the default. I don't really care. Desktop preview, whatever that is. Okay, finally I arrived in my phone. So let's look at the brightness of this thing. Let's turn it out to, on to Full brightness, it's now saying screen too bright. I don't care. We can see things clearly and in a crisp fashion. And comparing it to the iPhone, the iPhone of course outshines it both in intensity and contrast. Nonetheless, for my intended usage, this is neither too slow nor in any other way unacceptable. I shall now do a typical thing. No usage statistics for you, Google. <laughs> the thing is slow enough, you know. Besides, I'm a bit privacy conscious. Yeah. Turn on sync. Yes, I'm in. And let's see. That's how long it takes to open its default home page. I will not care all that much about it, because eventually I will simply replace Chrome with Firefox, but still, let's go to the BBC, as many people would like certainly to see how fast is browsing with this in practice. And I must say, well that is decent, right? So. I just pressed something by mistake, but still, I, I should have said I do not agree, doesn't matter. American Pie stars, I reuniting, and so on and so forth. Browsing is actually rather swift. And that works, so this part is fine. Now, let us see in the settings. Have I got any chance to go to normal navigation? Ah, navigation bar. Yes, certainly. Gesture navigation. No, certainly not. Why would you want me to? And yeah, that's the one I prefer. Yes, please. Great. Oh, finally the phone became usable. The question now was, will the face unlock work? Because you know, it doesn't have a fingerprint unlock, I believe. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. No fingerprint unlock. I can now type in my pin.
but that's it. So, if we want face unlock, we should likely enable face unlock. And that should be going somewhere through these settings. And I'll just simply see face unlock. Yes, please. <sighs> Enter my pin. Unlock with my face. I agree. How to set up face unlock. Start. Center your face in the circle. Nah, just a moment. No, 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 <laughs> no. No, this is, this is not good. <laughs> I, I will have to change that. I don't want that it remembers me with some phone filming it. This is terrible. Okay, here we are. <laughs> the lead face model. Yeah, sometimes we think we might, but... <laughs> That's what we got from nature and we just should live with it. And now the moment of truth comes. I'm gonna lock it, look up. I'm going to do so. And now here you see the little face unlock thing. I'm gonna show myself. It worked. It worked in fact very well. Again. Maybe, maybe if I change position, maybe looking a little differently, huh? Again, works. <laughs> I have to confirm, face unlock works very nicely. Now, the next thing to do maybe would be to surf some YouTube video in... <sighs> Like, how do I get to my apps? I discovered something interesting. The face unlock does not work when the phone itself is not on. So if I click, then it works. Great. Now, the one thing I seem to be somewhat missing is an app drawer. I hate not having an app drawer. Uh, terms of service, Play Store. Now everything will need to be... ...updated. And installed and so on and so forth. You can choose additional web browsers for your device. I do so. There is something where I'm supposed to say I got it. Set up a new ser ser search engine or browser. Got it. And up here, we are having, as expected, the system update. It's an 88 megabyte download. Okay, going for it. It's not exactly in a hurry to come down, but it's okay. And how's the Play Store doing? Yeah, update Google Play services. Google Play Store won't run unless. And now this is the funny part. Let's look for Firefox. Oh, it did install, that's nice, because sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it requires the update of the Play services so much that unless you do it, nothing ever works, but Opera is taking its good while. Both installed though, great. And I was actually looking for some way to play back things, but I don't seem to have an app drawer, which really annoys the living daylight out of me. I will certainly change the launcher. There was a problem with the server, 400, retry. Okay, how do we solve this? Likely by such a issue where I have to first update YouTube. Yeah, indeed, it requires an update. 
But we shall see whether the update of YouTube will also lead, will actually just work like that, or whether I will actually need to update the Google Play services right away. So this is how long it takes to install anything here at all. It's not slow in the everyday interactions other than that. If I go to the settings, let's see. Is there the screen timeout or something? Yes. 30 seconds is certainly not gonna cut it. And this is going to be so much less annoying. Okay, let's update also the Google Play services, given how much it is crying for it. Update. And while it is doing that, we may try out YouTube again. Okay, and now... Actually, I always liked Mark Felton's videos. Ads are loading. I don't care about that. Ja, Klaus, ich... Es ist mir vollkommen wurscht, das ist eine echt dumme Werbung. So, over we go. Well, from this I judge, sound is pretty much fine, but I actually have to be careful what I show you so it's not some protected material for too long. Let me just find something which should be freely redistributable. Easiest being, of course, my own video. Make it quieter. So here we are having it. Yeah, the welcome music. And this is. In other words, if you are doing this, don't be surprised if it takes a while. Okay, just asked me for Twitch between Notepad and the command prompt. In any sort of trying this one, skipping the intro. We are on already now on three of the four netbooks. Not even sure that the 901 that the EEPC 901 even caught it. It is showing something, some sort of movement. So the sound will win no prize. It is a little bit not as crisp as it is on other devices. Nonetheless, it is usable and having a headphone jack makes the whole experience, of course, all the more enjoyable. With that said, despite the fact that the advertisement with the 8 gigabytes of RAM was a flat out lie. The phone itself seems to be good enough to use for my purposes as a secondary phone for, well, experiments, my other SIM card and so on and so forth. My wife even had a theory that I might be a serial killer given my amount of phones and SIM cards. But <laughs> I assure you, I'm not. Yet. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. 
Let's see, however, how the virtual memory is going. So the Android settings don't find virtual memory. If I go for a RAM, we have no results. If I go for virtual, nothing sensible. Android settings are really weird. Let's go to system, maybe from there. The system update is installing. That is still going on. And I'll now try to figure out where the virtual memory of this thing is. Ha! Huh. Yes, indeed. So here in about phone where you would normally expect some sort of semi-interesting informations you're having here the ram of four plus one gigabyte i was interested in that in order to comment does it even have the eight gigabyte turned on by default or not and the answer is definitely not we are having after the installation some 49 gigabyte available of the 64 it comes with And that's how it is going to get used. And setting it up with the Nova launcher, as well as, you know, changing a couple of other things. This is what it really looks like in the end. I admit I do enjoy using it. And it does certainly last the day, if not more. So I'm actually quite satisfied with it, and I must say, I'm quite surprised how far technology has come, and that indeed, a very remarkable tool for interaction, communication, learning, and many other tasks, computation in fact even, <laughs> has become so cheap and so available, that even for a couple of tens of euro, you can participate in essentially interactions across the world. With that, thank you very much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope to greet you here soon again for other adventures, as the reviews are not really the topic of this channel. Until our next encounter, have a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.